Investing in the US has actually become a lot trendier in the recent years. As we can see from the graph, since the pandemic hit, the peak daily retail investor inflows is now more than double what it was a couple of years ago. This has been caused because of two different factors. The first one is the development of companies and investment platforms such as Robinhood, which have actually modernized the way that investing actually works, have lowered the fees, and have reduced the barriers to entry for the average American consumer to invest in the stock market. And the second one is that during the pandemic, people actually had a lot more time to consider, first of all, how they were managing their personal finances and had a lot more time to actually start learning about investing and what they could do in order to improve their performance and their overall returns to either build wealth or even retire earlier. And a lot, a lot of them actually followed this extremely good quote by Robert G. Allen. How many millionaires do you know who have become wealthy by investing in savings accounts? I rest my case. And now since the number of investors have actually risen by so much in such short period of time, it has led to millions of YouTube videos and millions of bestseller books all around the same topic, which is how to improve your stock market performance. But today I'll be offering a different view on all of this. Today I'll be proposing that there are a lot of factors which actually influence the lifetime investment returns. That is, how much money you actually extract from your savings or your investment accounts when you actually choose to do so. Of course, we do have investment performance in the mix because it is one of the most important ones, but there are other many factors such as the personal savings rate, how much time you spend in the market, how good you are at preserving your capital, if you choose to reinvest your dividends or actually take them out as income, what the economic conditions that you're facing actually look like, what fees and expenses are you actually exposed to, because for example, if you're investing in the US from Europe, you're actually facing a lot higher expenses and fees than if you're an American investor. And of course, what personal circumstances you have. Imagine you have to take money out of the stock market in order to repair your car. All of these factors and many more are very common factors that actually influence your lifetime investment returns. And today we'll be doing a deeper dive onto the main four. Starting with, of course, the personal savings rate. Now this graph shows the percentage of after-tax income that an average household saves in the US. It currently starts at 4.1%. And of course, during the pandemic, it rose up to 35% because of the uncertainty that there was and because people were scared and wanted to save up in case of what was coming in the near future. And with this data, we'll actually be doing a little experiment. So take this 4.1% and store it in your head. And now we'll look at, for example, Warren Buffett, who's considered the greatest investor of all time, well, he averaged a 19.8% CAGR from 1965 all the way to 2023. And now the average performance for an investor is a 10.2%, which is the S&P 500 annual performance in the same time frame. Now, the experiment we'll be doing is comparing an investor which has lower savings of around 5%, which is higher than that 4.1% we saw, and higher performance, which we stuck a 15%, which, of course, is not going to get to the 19.8% of Warren Buffett, and an average household which has higher savings rate of 15%, but a lower performance of 10%, which is the average of just investing in the S&P 500 and leaving your money over there. Well, if you're investing from 2020 all the way up to 2045, which means 25 years, well, in the end, there is a return difference after 25 years of close to $400,000. But I haven't told you all the truth, because investment performance does matter but it matters more when you already have an established portfolio and every monthly contribution that you make from your savings doesn't significantly affect your ending balance. This is, for example, if we look at Warren Buffett's net worth by age, it took him seven years to grow $15,000. However, when he was 52, it only took him six years to gain $1.6 billion. Warren Buffett has had an average performance of close to 20%, but I can assure you, that at the start of his career, when he only had $5,000 in his bank account, the majority of his returns to get to the $20,000 was made due to his savings. Because saving money at the start is very easy. For example, if you have a $50,000 salary and you increase your saving by 10%, then you have $5,000 extra that you're saving and you're putting into your balance. And this is very significant when you have an investment portfolio that is around $10,000 because you're instantly adding a 50% to your balance. However, when you are saving that same amount and your portfolio is over a million, what is more relevant is actually having a higher performance rate. 
What I'm trying to get at is that both factors are extremely important. However, savings is a lot more important earlier in your lifetime. However, when your investment portfolio reaches a certain amount, performance actually starts to matter a lot more as you can make more money by investing better than just by saving more. And this goes hand in hand with what Nick Train said, which is that relatively small divergences in annual compounded returns over many years will result in dramatic differences in terminal wealth, which refers to the fact that investment performance is actually extremely important. But another thing that matters a lot is your time in the market. The graph over here shows you the investment returns by time in the market from 2020 to 2045. And we're of course assuming the same for both profiles. They both invest yearly $10,000 and they both have a yearly return of 10%, just to simplify things. However, one profile started to invest in 2020 and the other profile started to invest in 2025, just five years later. In 2045, just 25 years after the first person started investing, his portfolio was valued at $1.2 million, which is great, you'd be able to retire on that. However, the second person was not that lucky, although over five years, the total contribution difference was only $50,000, right? Because each person invested $10,000 yearly. However, by total value, just by staying invested five more years, the first person managed to get returns of close to $500,000 more than the second person that started investing five years later. This is the power of compounding, again, illustrated in a different example. Of course, the total contribution difference was only $50,000, but that 10% yearly return accumulated and increased at a faster pace every single year. And now the last point that I wanted to touch on was don't lose money. There's no need to take on big risks. This is just a chart that shows you the gains you need in order to recover from investment losses. So if you lose 1%, you'll only need 1% to get back your money. That sounds about right. The moment you start to lose 20% on an investment, then you need 25% back in order to recuperate your initial loss. But this gets extremely worrying as you go further and further on. Because if you lose 50% in an investment, you then need 100% to replace that capital that you lost. And of course, if you go to the ultra extreme, if you take a huge risk and you lose 80% of your portfolio, you then need an spectacular return of 400% to get back to where you were. So this is why many great investors such as Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Peter Lynch, Terry Smith, the main thing that they tell you is rule number one is to never lose money. Always make sure that you're having a good control over your portfolio, that you know where the risks are, that you know when you cut your positions that are doing badly, that are don't have good, that have deteriorating fundamentals, that you don't take too many risks because if you have saved up and you have a pretty good portfolio and you have a good portfolio that is a significant amount, losing that money fast, because we all make mistakes when investing, we're all going to be in the red at some point in our careers and managing the risk you're taking with your portfolio is essential. As Adam Smith, the founder of economics once said, the joys of compounding are there if you keep your stake growing, but all you need to have is one year in which you give back half and your program at the same growth rate must stretch out years and years longer. Of course, this means that if you lose 50% in one bad year because you were taking too many risks, the rest of your investing until you make 100% of return will only be to cover your losses. And then you'll be at the same point where you used to be before you lost that money. So I'll leave you with that food for thought. And let me know what you think in the comments because I love making these videos and I want to know what will help you in the future. So thank you for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. Join the Patreon for extra content and there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trader Republic.